Hi, I'm Ginger Rankin with the Zahiri and Company, and this is another segment of Trunk Treasures today. I'm glad you're joining me. You know, I want to talk to you briefly about something that is so on my heart today. I see so many people in the body of Christ who are wounded today, wounded, broken hearted, uh, downcast, depressed, not caring about in themselves what God has, has literally stated in his word that he is to be in us. You know, when we come to him, we take on his identity and whatever he has in the Father becomes ours. And I, I just see so many people who are scarred from life. And even as born again, spirit filled people, uh, life has done what we read in Matthew uh, 7, where the, let's just look at it, where it says that the winds will come and the rains will come and they'll beat up against our house. We won't look at it. And if we don't have the word of God to stand on in those times, if we're not building our house, the Bible clearly says on the words of God for our lives, when those storms come, when they beat up against our house, we're going to take on that damage and maybe not know how to um, overcome it, not know how to go through like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went through the fire, but they came out the other side not even singed, not even smelling of smoke. I, I get so saddened today and when I look at the body of Christ at large and see so much potential represented, so many gifts represented, so much talent represented, and yet, you know, we are the owners. The Bible says that the, that the prophet is in charge of the prophecy that would come forth from him. And so it is. Um, God gave his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 4 tells us that he gave gifts to the church. And yet, you know, we're in charge of all of that. We determine. God can give us the gifts. He can give us the talents. He can bring all the potential in the world. He can fill us so full. And yet, do you realize that he has to look to us and say, what will you do with it? What will you do with what I have imparted in you? So we're the owners of all that God gives to us. We are the ones who determine the outcome of God's investment in our lives. I find it so sad that people don't have the self-esteem, the self-confidence. Um, they don't have the faith. Some, many of them don't have the faith that really and truly says within all things are possible unto me because of who God is for me, who God is in me, and who God can literally be through me if I allow him to have his way in me, have his sway over my life. You know, one good thing about being so full of God, so full of fellowship with Him, so rich and full, having all of this being just abounding in us, is that then it's more likely that when God comes to us and requires something of us, it'll just 
come out. You know, it'll be easier for us to say, yes, Lord. But I wanted to just speak with you for a few minutes today about my experience, and I've already shared much about this in videos past, but we have to know who we are in Christ Jesus, what he's done on our behalf, and how to literally stand in that. To, to stand and having done all to stand, to continue always to stand in who he says we are. I was sharing on Facebook earlier today that if you're a forerunner, if you have vision, if God has imparted a vision into your life, it'll take a lot for you to get to the place where that vision is able to uh, become a reality. Number one, that vision will be tested. It'll be tested because not everybody's going to believe what you believe about what God has shown you for your own life. And it is at that point that who you are in Him, how established you are in Him, are you? Because it will determine whether at that point when opposition comes to you, whether you'll do what Jesus said in the scriptures, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. Now, you know, one time the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Ginger, people are so afraid of that scripture. And yet he said, they're so afraid of being the one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back. But he said, I want you to know, and it hurt my heart when I heard him say it, because I knew that he was saying it out of a hurt heart himself. But he said, I wish that people had even put their hand to the plow. Many people think they've put their hand to the plow, but God sees it differently. And every one of us is called. If we're in him, we are blessed. And the first thing he wants us to learn is who we are in him. He wants to establish us in our relationship with him. He wants to cause us to realize um, and to get the reality of our existence being totally in him. And that is a relationship that takes time, effort, energy, and it's a purposeful thing. You have to purpose on purpose. God has to have come into your life. Jesus has to have come into your life and really mean more to you than just going to church on Sunday or an occasional visit on a holiday. That isn't, we're not even talking about that right here. However, the potential I spoke of earlier, there is potential for everybody. Jesus said, I will in no wise cast out any man who comes unto me. So any man can come and any man has the potential to, to have gifts and to have a life that is called and blessed by God if we choose. But to be established in him and his word for our lives, it'll take that for us in order to be able to press through the things that God will appoint for our lives, if we're willing. My goodness, the Lord can surprise you so. You know, when, the, when you lift the ceiling, when you believe in God, and when you find out what his word says about you, it lifts off the ceiling over life. It does. It's like the old saying, the sky is the limit. Everything is wide open. Possibilities. You know, go ahead and think big. Go ahead and dream big. Because God is the creator of all things. And when we belong to him, all of his power is 
Ephesians um, 1, 18 through 22, says all of his power is to us word. And God wants us to get a revelation of that. For ourselves but not only for ourselves what he wants us to come to understand after we come to know who we are in him is that there is a work he wants us to be involved in he makes us his own and that that's his aim but then he wants us to shine our light shine that new thing in us so that others can come to know him as well and have the same new life with him. So we have a job to do once we're, we have discovered our own selves in him. And believe me, if you truly discover yourself in him, you'll want to tell others. I mean, it'll be an automatic because what you become in him will be so exciting, so overwhelming. Uh, it, it's unbelievable, but it's believable. And it, it, it's just like an exciting journey that you're going to be able to go on with the Lord. So, but I, back to this, I see so many people who are not established in who God says they are in Him. And I want to come back. I just want to lay this out. We're, we just finished up our series on a prophetic word the Lord gave me at the beginning of the year, dealing with a refreshing that God wants to do in the body of Christ in this year. Now I want to move forward. God is really moving us forward now. And I want to begin to dig in to... A lot of scripture to teach us our founding in him we've already done a foundational uh, series on uh, obliterating abolishing obliterating fear in our lives and the role that that will play in our success um, and again I want to go back to this on Facebook I posted a thing about forerunners um, when I started out, God had spoken to me in 1979 a very clear mandate, a very clear vision of a calling on my life. He told me specifically what he wanted me to do. And immediately following, a miraculous thing happened in my life that gave me those gifts that he had spoken of in the calling. So people around me who knew me, they knew <laughs> that this was a thing of God. This was an impossibility, literally, in my life. My abilities, my capabilities um, did not enter into this. It was a supernatural thing. And God gifted me with what he told me he was going to use when he sent me forth in this calling. But that didn't mean that I didn't have horrific opposition. Oh, I had it. And I had it coming from every side. But you know, the awesome thing is that my God prepared me for that ahead of time. Established me in him. Me and him to the place where his voice was so clear to me um i walked in peace i had no fear for the first time in my life and had he not prepared me in this way and much more is included in that i would not have made it to the time four years later when he opened the door that i always knew he would open. I had so many people tell me, you'll never do that because of this. You'll never be able to do that because of this. You'll never do that. That will never happen for you. And yet, you guys, I had this thing that just burned in me night and day. I knew that I knew that I knew. I knew my God, number one. 
I knew his voice, number two. I knew his words to me, number three. I knew what he had um, prophesied over me, and I was seeing it come to pass. And so I had to stand on that ground when it was severely attacked time and time and time again. Four years later, the door would open that I always knew would. And it was a supernatural move of God. And your vision, your dream, God can speak a word to you at any time when you're seeking him. I'm telling you, he wants us to seek him. He wants us to do what Matthew 6 says. He wants us to put him first. Always, we have to put him first. And when we do that, when he is the desire of our heart, when he is our all in all, when we can't get enough of him, when we don't want to satisfy anybody else in this life, including ourselves, other than him, then, then God is going to hear us. God is going to, to attend unto our voice, attend unto our cry. And you don't know what he'll do. You have no idea what he will do in your life when you get into that posture and that position with him. He can take the things that you're already aware of in your life, the gifts that you already have, the talents you already have, and he can, he can recreate them. He can add to them. Um, he can add his supernatural to your natural. And you will go forth with something God created. And it's just totally awesome. But I want you just to consider what I'm speaking about right now. And we've touched on this lightly in videos past, but I want to come back, as I said, and I want to begin to pour out, and we're going to go over uh, verses in the Bible that will prepare you as a forerunner, because I truly know, and I know that I know that God is looking for forerunners in this day. He needs people who are built strong, who can go out and get on the front lines and handle the attacks and handle the temptations, handle it all in his strength, not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit, the word says. By the word of God, we will overcome and we'll go forth and conquer and gain the ground that God is so needing us to gain for his kingdom in this day. So I want you to come back and join me for this new series. I don't even have a title for it yet. I'm just going by what he speaks to me when he speaks it. So come back. And right now I want you just to begin to pray. I want you to pray. Ask the Lord to prepare your heart, prepare your mind to hear. Now, a lot of you could hear what I've said so far and say, oh, I don't need that, I don't need that. And you know what, I don't believe you because I see conversation. I see people who, in networking, who are, uh, they're not where they are using what they have. They're not satisfied they're not fulfilled they're they're still looking for what is it god they have that big question in their mind and i believe that it has a lot to do with the fact that maybe we're not as established as we need to be in order that we can move forward maybe our thoughts are not truly and completely lining up with what the Word of God says about us once we're in Him. So take all this and pray about it. And then come back and join us for segment one of this new series. Father, I ask you to touch the hearts of those who are listening today. Lord God, I consider them my friends, and I know that they're your friends, Lord God. Those that are in you already, Lord God, I pray that 
We're going to get a sharpening together. Lord God, a sharpening that will cause the light that is in them to be increased, Father God, in this day. That they might be used, Father God, in a new way, in a fresh way. In a way, Father, that maybe they've only imagined and dreamt of in the past, but have never seen the realization of that dream come to pass. So, Lord, I pray for them that when we come back, they're going to be ready to hear your word and that your work can be accomplished in them. For those who don't know you today, Jesus, Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 says, To him who believes in his heart, confesses with his mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, he shall be saved. Do that today. You really need to do that today. You don't want to be one more day without knowing your eternal position for life. And you don't want to be without God. Don't be without God one more day of your life. Let Jesus be the Lord. Be the sacrifice for your sins. And then get on with the journey. Because it's a fabulous, fabulous heavenly journey that God calls us to walk in with him. I love you. He loves you. And I'll see you next time right here on Trunk Treasures with Izzy Harriet and Company. Have a good rest of the day and get prepared.